Welcome to St. Helena Ministries Daily Prayer with the Divine Office. Today is Friday of the 18th week in Ordinary Time. Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will proclaim your praise. Come, let us praise the Lord, in Him is all our delight. Come, let us praise the Lord, in Him is all our delight. Come, let us sing to the Lord and shout with joy to the Rock who saves us. Let us approach Him with praise and thanksgiving and sing joyful songs to the Lord. Come, let us praise the Lord. In Him is all our delight. The Lord is God, the mighty God, the great King over all the gods. He holds in His hands the depths of the earth and the highest mountains as well. He made the sea, it belongs to Him. The dry land too, for it was formed by His hands. Come, let us praise the Lord. In Him is all our delight. Come then, let us bow down in worship, bending the knee before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are his people, the flock he shepherds. Come, let us praise the Lord. In him is all our delight. Today listen to the voice of the Lord. Do not grow stubborn as your fathers did in the wilderness, when at Meribah and Massa they challenged me and provoked me, although they had seen all of my works. Come, let us praise the Lord. In him is all our delight. Forty years I endured that generation. I said, They are a people whose hearts go astray, and they do not know my ways. So I swore in my anger, they shall not enter into my rest. Come, let us praise the Lord. In him is all our delight. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Come, let us praise the Lord. In him is all our delight. Sing praise to our Creator, O sons of Adam's race, God's children by adoption, baptized into His grace. Praise the Holy Trinity, undivided unity, Holy God, Mighty God, God immortal, be adored. To Jesus Christ give glory, God's co-eternal Son. As members of His body, we live in Him as one. Praise the Holy Trinity, undivided unity, Holy God, Mighty God, God immortal, be adored. Now praise the Holy Spirit, poured forth upon the earth, who sanctifies and guides us, confirmed in our rebirth. Praise the Holy Trinity, undivided unity, Holy God, Mighty God, God immortal, be adored. Lord, in your anger do not punish me. O Lord, do not rebuke me in your anger. Do not punish me, Lord, in your rage. Your arrows have sunk deep in me. Your hand has come down upon me. Through your anger all my body is sick. Through my sin there is no health in my limbs. My guilt towers higher than my head. It is a weight weight too heavy to bear. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Lord, in your anger, do not punish me. Lord, you know all my longings. My wounds are foul and festering, the result of my own folly. I am bowed and brought to my knees. I go mourning all the day long. All my frame burns with fever. All my body is sick. Spent and utterly crushed, I cry aloud in anguish of heart. O Lord, you know all my longing. My groans are not hidden from you. My heart throbs. My strength is spent. The very light has gone from my eyes. My friends avoid me like a leper. Those closest to me stand afar off. Those who plot against my life lay snares. Those who seek my ruin speak of harm, planning treachery all the day long. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Lord, you know all my longings. I confess my guilt to you, Lord. Do not abandon me, for you are my Savior. But I am like the deaf who cannot hear, like the dumb unable to speak. I am like a man who hears nothing, in whose mouth is no defense. I count on you, O Lord. It is you, Lord God, who will answer. 
I pray, do not let them mock me, those who triumph if my foot should slip. For I am on the point of falling, and my pain is always before me. I confess that I am guilty, and my sin fills me with dismay. My wanton enemies are numberless, and my lying foes are many. They repay me evil for good, and attack me for seeking what is right. O Lord, do not forsake me. My God, do not stand afar off. Make haste and come to my help, O Lord, my God, my Savior. Do not abandon us, Lord our God. You did not forget the broken body of your Christ, nor the mockery his love received. We, your children, are weighed down with sin. Give us the fullness of your mercy. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. I confess my guilt to you, Lord. Do not abandon me, for you are my Savior. My eyes keep watch for your saving help, awaiting the word that will justify me. A reading from the book of the prophet Hosea. Thus says the Lord, Protest against your mother, protest, for she is not my wife and I am not her husband. Let her remove her harlotry from before her. Since she has not known that it was I who gave her the grain, the wine, and the oil, and her abundance of silver and of gold, which they used for Baal, therefore I will take back my grain in its time and my wine in its season. I will snatch away my wool and my flax, which, with which she covers her nakedness. So now I will lay bare her shame before the eyes of her lovers, and no one can deliver her out of my hand. I will bring her I will bring an end to all her joy, her feasts, her new moons, her sabbaths, and all her solemnities. I will lay waste her vines and fig trees, of which she said, These are the hire my lovers have given me. I will turn them into rank growth, and wild beasts shall devour them. I will punish her for the days of the Baals for whom she burnt incense, while she decked herself out with her rings and her jewels and in going after her lovers forgot me, says the Lord. Therefore I will hedge in her way with thorns, and erect a wall against her, so that she cannot find her paths. If she runs after her lovers, she shall not overtake them. If she looks for them, she shall not find them. Then she shall say, I will go back to my first husband, for it was better with me then than now. So I will allure her. I will lead her into the desert and speak to her heart. From there I will give her the vineyards she had and the valley of Achor as a door of hope. She shall respond there as in the days of her youth when she came up from the land of Egypt. On that day, says the Lord, she, call, she shall call me my husband, and never again my Baal. Then will I remove from her mouth the names of the Baals so, they, so that they shall no longer be invoked. I will make a covenant for them on that day with the beasts of the field, with the birds of the air, and with the things that crawl on the ground. Bow and sword and war I will destroy from the land, and I will let them take their rest in security. I will espouse you to me forever. I will espouse you in right and in justice, in love and in mercy. I will espouse you in fidelity and you shall know the Lord. On that day I will respond, says the Lord. I will respond to the heavens, and they shall respond to the earth. The earth shall respond to the grain and wine and oil, and these shall respond to Jezreel. I will sow him for myself in the land, and I will have pity on Lohurama. I will say to Loami, You are my people, and he shall say, my God. This is the wedding day of the Lamb. His bride has made herself ready. Blessed are those invited to the marriage feast of the Lamb. I will betroth you to myself in faithfulness, and you shall know the Lord. Blessed are those invited to the marriage feast of the Lamb. 
A reading from a spiritual canticle by St. John of the Cross, priest. The soul united to God and transformed in Him draws from within God a divine breath, much like the Most High God Himself. And God, abiding in the soul, breathes forth the life of the soul as its exemplar. This I take to be what Paul meant when he said, Because you are children of God, God has spent the ser- sent the Spirit of His Son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. This is what takes place in those who have achieved perfection. One should not wonder that the soul is capable of so sublime an activity. For if God so favors her that she is made godlike by union with the Most Holy Trinity, I ask you then, why it should seem so incredible that the soul, at one with the Trinity and in the greatest possible likeness to it, should share the understanding, knowledge, and love which God achieves in himself. How this is possible no other power or wisdom can express, save by explaining how the Son of God obtained this sublime state for us, and won for us the power to be the children of God, as he asked of the Father, Father, I desire that where I am those you have given me may also be with me, that they may see the glory you have given me. That is, they may share with certainty the very task I perform. And then he said, Not for them alone do I ask, but also for those who will come to believe in me through their teaching, that all may be one as you, Father, are one in me, and I in you, that they may be one in us, that the world may believe that you have sent me, and the glory you have given me I have given them, that they may be one as we are, I in them, you in me, that they may be made perfect, and the world will know that you sent me, And as you have loved me, so I have loved them. The Father thus gives them some love. The Father thus gives them the same love he shares with the Son, though not by nature as with the Son, but through unity and and transformation of love. One should not think that the Son is asking the Father to make the saints one with him in essence and nature, as the Son is with the Father but rather that they be united with him in love, just as the Father and Son are one in the essential unity of love. Accordingly, souls possess the same goods by participation that the Son possesses by nature. As a result, they are truly divine by participation, equals and companions of God. Thus Peter said, May grace and peace be perfected in you, in the knowledge of God and Christ Jesus our Lord, for all things of his divine power, which are given to us for our life and goodness, are given through the knowledge of him who called us to his own glory and power, by which he has given us great and precious promises, that by these we may be made partakers of the divine nature. So the soul, in this union which God has ordained, joins in the work of the Trinity, not yet fully as in the life to come, but nonetheless even now in a real and perceptible way. O my soul, created to enjoy such exquisite gifts, what are you doing? Where is your life going? How wretched is the blindness of Adam's children, if indeed we are blind to such a brilliant light and deaf to so insistent a voice. See how great is the love the Father has given us. We are called God's children, and that is what we are. We know that when He appears, we shall be like Him, for we shall see Him as He really is. We are called God's children, and that is what we are. Let us pray. Father of everlasting goodness, our origin and guide, be close to us and hear the prayers of all who praise You. Forgive our sins and restore us to life. Keep us safe in Your love. Grant this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Let us praise the Lord and give him thanks. Thank you for praying with me today. Don't forget to join us for our Sunday Rosary live stream at 6 p.m. Eastern each Sunday on our YouTube channel. 
Please also like, share, follow, subscribe, and drop in a comment on whichever platforms you use. Pray for us. Know of our continued prayers for you. Have a blessed day.